Hi everyone, my name is Abby Paulo. I am from the College of Education and today I will be discussing um, developing multisyllabic decoding in ELL students. ELL reading instruction. Approximately 2,250 students are served in general education classrooms within Bay District schools. In Bay County, instructional support for ELL students varies across classroom to classroom. In most cases, instruction addresses overall language skills, but for older students, explicit decoding isn't always included in instruction. If ELL students are given explicit instruction for decoding multisyllabic words, can they show improvement? My research questions were, what is the nature of reading skills of ELL students? Does multisyllabic decoding instruction benefit the student for reading? So methods, I performed a case study. I had one fourth grade ELL student. This student was born in Venezuela. She is one of two children. Her native language is Spanish, and she scores in the first percentile on the standard reading assessments. The intervention process. So first, I administered um, a reading assessment. This is a diagnos diagnostic assessment of reading, which we call the DAR. I then administered a core phonics survey to really narrow down what phonics skills she had or was missing. Then I developed a three lesson intervention. And I also administered a pre and post test to measure the intervention effectiveness. So my DAR results were in the category of phonological awareness, letters and sounds and word analysis. So for phonological awareness, she mastered rhyming words. She showed mastery in segmenting words. She mastered hearing initial consonant. She mastered hearing final consonant. And she mastered auditory blending. Then in the category of letters and sounds, she could name capital letters. She could name lowercase letters. She showed mastery in matching letters. She showed mastery in matching words. And she also mastered writing words. In the category of word analysis, she mastered consonant sounds, she mastered consonant blends, she mastered short vowel sounds, she did not master the rule of silent E, she also did not show mastery in vowel diagraphs, she did not show mastery in vowel diphthongs, she did not master vowels with R. She did not master two syllable words. And she did not master poly polysyllabic words. The intervention process and the lesson sequence were, first she needed to learn how to identify the certain types of syllables. From there, then she learned what the vowel says for each syllable type. So does the vowel say the short sound or does the vowel say the long sound? From there, we taught her how to read multisyllabic words for each syllable type that we learned. Then we started to write multisyllabic words and really show the process of how we break down to write them. So my first lesson, was on closed syllables. So a closed syllable is where there are two consonants that close in a vowel. And closed syllables get a little tricky. You can have a vowel, as long as it has a consonant afterward, after the first vowel, then it's a closed syllable. So a silent E syllable is where there is a vowel followed by a consonant followed by an E. And that was my lesson number two. For lesson three, it's a vowel R, so a vowel followed by an R. My results for the pre and post test really showed great growth. So on the closed portion of the test, the student in the beginning in the pretest only scored 
got two right. Then in the end, she got 12 out of 15 right. In Silent E, she got two the first time, and she got 10 the second time. For Val R, my student on the pretest only got one right, and on the post test, she got eight right. I recognized that she had memorized a lot of real words, so then we really had to go in and work with pseudo words because she had memorized all these real words, but she didn't know the phonics skills around them. Over here is a picture of my pretest. These right here are the closed syllables. These right here are the silent E syllables. And these over here are the vowel R syllables. And all these words are multisyllabic. So these are the results broken down into pseudo words, real words, and encoding. So for closed syllables in pseudo words, the student got zero pseudo words on the pretest. She got four pseudo words on the post test. And then in closed syllables for the real words, the, my student in the pretest got one right, and on the post test got all five right. In encoding, she showed a little bit of growth for closed syllables. She went from one to three. For silent E, in the beginning, my student had no pseudo words correct, and on the post test, she got all five pseudo words correct. For real words, my student got two correct in the pretest and five correct in the post test. However, she did show no growth in encoding those silent E letters. So for Val R, my student got zero in the pretest and three in the post test. She got zero real words in the pretest and five in the post test. And here again, she showed no growth in encoding Val R. And then I showed a graph just for encoding to show that my student really did not show much growth in encoding except for in the closed syllables. So my discussion and conclusions, ELLs can improve decoding skills by learning how to identify and read multisyllabic words. In this case study, students must learn with pseudo words because real words are often memorized, which leads to not knowing if they can use the phonics pattern. Additional ways to improve phonics pattern is to review them while teaching multisyllabic words. In the subtest encoding with no gain, it is concluded that more instruction is needed. Explicit instruction into sound letter correspondence for writing or encoding is highly recommended. This it will be completed by showing more examples and practicing the encoding piece repeatedly with each syllable type. Thank you guys so much for listening to my presentation. Here are my references. This is the core book that describes how to form a lesson. Here's the phonics survey I used, and then the DAR assessment that I gave.